You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Hello, and welcome to Red Devil Postgame, GHS TV's two-time national award-winning sports show. I'm Caden Bolton. And I'm Christian Maya. Fall sports have wrapped up, so on today's Red Devil Postgame, we're tuning our focus to GHS winter sports. We're talking basketball, cheerleading, and swimming, to name a few. But we can't move on without acknowledging our varsity football team. They had an amazing season, going 10-0 during the regular season and 2-1 during the playoffs. Although the guys didn't make it to the state championship, they had an amazing run. Let's take a look at how we finished the season. Arlington game was a it was a game to see whether we would eat off the bone and take everything, you know, that was given to us because we knew we were the better team, but it was ultimately up to us to see how we would perform against an opponent that we knew couldn't stay in the game with us. I think we did a very good job on special teams. Everybody held that guy so the returner can get like past 50 yard line. I feel like we back where we was unfinished at, so we just finna keep doing what we've been doing. Go to go to that other uh, game. Last week's uh, first round playoff game with West Creek went really well for the guys. Um, we executed efficiently. Everybody on the team on the team completed their job and did their job well. I feel like we played together as a team and that mentality was just different when it came to practices and the preparation of this game. Our playoff match against Barlow went really, really well. The guys played lights out. Uh, we were off to a 21-3 start uh, before halftime. We actually had some things in the second half that we would like to clean up. Barlow is one of those rivalries that are not rivalries, especially because of how they did us last year when they knocked us out of the playoffs in the third round and sent us home. So everybody who was in their 2024, 2025, and 2026 class, we wanted to make them feel what we felt last year. game was tough. You have two talented uh, teams playing each other for the fourth time in a year span. So that was tough, man. But I, I, I think just going about that game, we, we had a, they were better than us third quarter halfway through the fourth. And then at the end of the day, man, hats off to them. They made plays, you know. They made the plays they were supposed to make. Um, and, you know, they got us. Joining us now is our Red Devil football team head coach, Gene Robinson. Welcome. The team has had an amazing season so far, but we have to address the playoff loss first. We touched on it in the package, and we want to get a deeper look into what went wrong. Well, you know, uh, playing in November, man, a uh, team only has to be good for you, be better than you one game, maybe sometimes even one quarter, maybe sometimes even one play. Um, and that's a game where two evenly close matched teams in a Germantown and a Houston, obviously, cross town rivals, uh, came in and man, they got us. I mean, they were better than us for a quarter and a half. Uh, we gave up a few big plays in the third quarter. We obviously had two turnovers in the third quarter. Um, and, and that's where the ga game got away from us, man. And just like in November, you can't get those things back, you know? So obviously it was heartbreaking because I know how much preparation and how much hard work we put into our season to even get us to that point. Um, so, you know, that, that kind of crushed us, man. But 
Obviously, I thought it was a great year. I thought guys learned from adversity. I thought guys learned how to be better teammates. And for that, I think they'll go on to be better husbands, better leaders, and better men. You know what I mean? So I'm excited for the year we had. Obviously, we didn't get our main goal, but it was a good year. So, Coach, everyone was heartbroken, as you said, and rightfully so. Mm -hmm. But how does the team move past this? Well, I, I think the, the team will move past this, man. Come January, we'll get to working on, on 2024. We'll, we'll start off with, with a bang there. We'll start off in the weight room. We'll get some running, and then our spring will be good. I think Germantown has done a great job in, in getting great kids in, great kids with great families. So we, we know the goal, you know what I mean? And we're going to push towards that goal every year, year in, year out. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I, I think we have the guys – here right now to do that so we're excited for another year for another opportunity to compete and and those guys are, are really looking forward to putting in the work to getting back well coach facing any rival team can be tough but how was the the team able to focus mentally throughout the season well it, it, Every, every game is his own game, you know? So, man, we, we put a lot of preparation in, into to it week in, week out. You know, coaches came in or, or after church on Sunday, stayed here through Sunday night. The guys came in and, and then they know their plan. They know exactly what they need to do to execute in order for us to win the game. So, man, it, every every uh, fall, man, it, it's, it's busy, you know, and you're working, you're working, you're working, and you reap the benefits when you have guys signed to their college. When you have guys uh, go on, man, and, and, and do live their dreams, you know. So we're really excited, man, for, for our seniors who want to go on. We have a few signing on signing day, December the 20th, that we can't wait for. Coach, mm -hmm. um, what did this season mean to you, and how has it impacted you as a coach overall? It, mean a, it, it meant a lot to me, you know, uh, just, just having this. This is my first class when I came in as head coach here. These guys came in with me. They came in during the COVID in which we couldn't play football. So, Christian, instead of playing football, man, we ran all day, ran all day. You know, those guys could have went anywhere. They could have went to the private schools, to the municipalities to play, but they chose to stick here to become a team. So, man, just going through their process year in, year around, you see young boys growing to young men who are eager to get out and go be successful. So, man, I, I thought this season along with uh, the last four years have been great uh, for myself because I've grown as well as the players. Mm. <clears throat> well, Coach, like any year, big-time playmakers are heading off to college. Mm -hmm. Looking down your roster, who can we expect to step up next year? Oh, man, we got a host of guys who, who we can uh, expect to step up. Obviously, Trayvon McGorry just got offered by uh, Missouri Ole Miss. Obviously, Jamarion has been killing it. And then Makai, Makai Robbins, man, he, he's a guy who's going to step up. And then we're going to have some D-line guys, some linebackers who, who are really going to step up. So January will be huge for us, but Germantown is Germantown. G-Town, one town. So we'll be back for sure. Thank you, Coach, for joining us today, and happy holidays. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much, Coach. No doubt, Kane. Thank you, brother. DJ Allen and Daniel Anderson were just two of the playmakers from this year's senior class. But don't expect to see them next semester. The two are graduating earlier to get a jump start on their college career. It's a decision four years in the making. Defensively, the Red Devils are stacked, led by D1 commits Daniel Anderson and DJ Allen. At veteran linebacker Kyle and Dickens, safety Tayshawn Jefferson, and you have a playmaking defense that's one of the best in the area. DJ Allen came to us as a sophomore at the end of his sophomore year. So just getting him, getting him in, getting him the confidence, understanding that, hey, you're 6'3", you can run like this, you can move like this, you have a great opportunity to, to be a Division I football player. Coming from where I came from, like, you didn't really have too much. So seeing this is a big opportunity, a big blessing from God thing about Daniel Anderson was the summer before his junior year, which was his breakout year, he was working out with his dad at 5 a.m. and then coming to our uh, summer practices. So hard work works. I didn't grow up a football kid. I didn't really even think about college, so I didn't really have a dream school. But academics has also always been a, a, a big thing in my life. Obviously, both are gifted. Obviously, both 
um, are, are, are blessed with good size, good stature, uh, nice athletic ability in order to play the game. Daniel and DJ decided in the ninth grade basically that they wanted to graduate early. We are not big proponents of it because it is a lot of extra work on them and we hate for anybody to miss out on their high school time because it's just it's a really important part of your life. Um. When I first heard about the option, you know, I went home and I talked to my family about it. They, you know, of course, elaborated how how we be missing prom, or I might, I might be, I may be missing graduation. But it's all about sacrifice. And those guys worked. Obviously, um, they've done night school. They've done. Uh, summer school to put themselves in a position to graduate early. That way they can go get a head start at their college in January. Um, it was definitely a challenge to balance night school and football, but you know, I had a nice support system around me who uh, changed my schedule and put things in the work for me so it could be a little bit less challenging on me as an individual. Here, your senior year, you're the big man on campus. That We have a huge support system with our coaching staff and with our teachers and our administration. Understand that we are champions and we should carry ourselves as champions. I'm thankful for Coach Gene a lot because through this, I wouldn't have made it without him because he pushed me all summer, all night. And even through practice, he told me just keep going. Like, he understands like, what, I'm, what I'm doing, it's a lot. He was being a role model, a father figure, and put me in a position to go succeed. DJ Allen. What I look forward to in college is getting down there, doing what I need to do, and being able to play early. Well, firstly, I want to enroll and get a cybersecurity degree, well, a computer science degree that's focused in cybersecurity. Even if I don't make it in football, I could take it, I could take my talents to journalism and communication. He's going to be a Tar Heel, y'all. He's going to the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill to play football. Daniel Anderson. I would tell my future self, keep working hard, and whatever experience you go through, don't let it change who you are as an individual, as a person. Believe in yourself always, and you'll get what you want. Again, good luck, DJ Allen and Daniel Anderson. After the break, we dive into county championships with the swim team. Don't go away. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV a nationally recognized student television station. I'm your moderator, Brandon Sewell, coming to you live from the campus of Germantown High School. So GHS TV tries to model a real working station. I really thought it was cool when I first started a studio and all the opportunities that it was able to provide for me. That would be 36 out of 36. It's a rigorous class that demands a lot from students. At times, you're, you are going to be thrown into the fire to where you're just going to have to figure it out yourself, which is really great because then we gain more knowledge. Our teachers will give us how to start, but then we're left to make up the whole entire process. It just seems to me it's not enough space in the beginning. If it's not, let's figure out what we can do. They can be a producer, they can be a director, they can work graphics and learn audio, um, they can go out and shoot field reports. Akila, back to you. And it's a challenge to throw them into the environment and say, here's a camera, go out and record uh, this interview and some B-roll. But those are the challenges that grow students to do bigger projects. Welcome to Red Devil News Beat. In GHS TV, we have a variety of shows. We have Crosstalk. Hello and welcome to a new season of GHS TV's award-winning talk show, Crosstalk. We have Insider, which is all about Germantown. Welcome to GHS Insider, the show that's all about the G. Cut to win and cute talent. Wake up, Germantown. It's Wednesday, April 5th. I'm calling you in. Some things that I've learned from this class is that how to work as a team. We learn how to communicate better with people. Something I'll take with me from um, in the future is their slogan, check, double check, and check again. There's so many different things you can do here. I would say take risks. Push yourself further than you think you can go, and we will help guide you there. Go, go Red, Red Devils! Devils. For more information about the Kappa program, visit ghskappa.com or call 755-7775. You're watching the award-winning GHS TV, a nationally recognized student television station. Welcome back to Red Devil Post Game. Winter is here, but don't tell that to the GHS swim team. They suit up every week for practice and meets and recently competed in the county championship. 
Postgame reporter Megan Moore was there and has more. The GHS Red Devil swim team had a great season, and that continued this evening at the MSCIAA Championship, where swimmers Anissa Strickland and Dedrick Stark swam in multiple races. Here with me today is head coach Julia Henry, Anissa Strickland, and Dedrick Starks. Congratulations on making it to the championship. What were your final results? So really excited. Our girls came in second again this year. They came in second last year, coming from behind at the end in our last relay race last year. So it was exciting. So we were really thrilled to hold on to second place again this year. And then also really excited we came in second place with our boys this year as well. So I'm very, very happy about that. Coach Henry, how proud are you of your swimmers? I am extremely proud of them. We had a lot of personal best um, happen this season. We have a lot of new swimmers who have just continually grown in this. We've had some good leadership with Dedrick and Akayla Jackson, who are our senior um, experienced swimmers that have come back for this season, for this their third season with me. And um, it's just been a it's been a great season. Anissa, where have you improved this season? Um. Okay. When I started out um, being on the team. I think that I didn't really know how to swim competitively. I swim for fun, but I think that I've really improved on my, my freestyle more than anything. Coach, how can the team improve next season? Um, we just need to have a lot more commitment, people coming out and staying in the water, getting in shape and staying throughout. We've had some injuries and illnesses that kind of set us back a little bit this season, but um, we just got to get more bodies in the water and more time at practice. Lastly, Dedrick. What got you into swimming? Well, it all started when I was doing, well, well, when my dad signed me up for swim lessons at the YMCA. And during one of the lessons, one of the swim coaches actually saw me swim and asked me, hey, want to join our team? And I said yes, and that's how I got here today. And if I didn't make that decision, I wouldn't even be here. Reporting for Red Devil Post Game, I'm Megan Moore. District and regional games have started for both our girls and boys basketball teams and the schedule is stacked. The girls team is still trying to get their footing, having lost some close games, but they continue to work hard for those W's. Post game reporter Aaron Fitzgerald talked with coach Daphne Thomas on the girls' overall performance so far. The GHS girls basketball team started their season out strong with a blowout 49-0 win to Kip Memphis Collegiate School. But since, things have been rocky with two close back-to-back -back losses. I'm here with Coach Daphne Thomas. Do you feel the team has underlying strength and motivation that will lead to a winning season? I think they do have the motivation and strength to win a season. There's some other things we're missing. Motivation, not one of them. Strength, not one of them. But some other things that we're missing to come up with some wins. We took a loss by, I think, seven our last game, four this just past game. So those are close losses. If we fix some things, we'll be able to win this, the next one. Coach Thomas, has playmaking been a strength or weakness for the team this year? We have the playmakers, so that's our strength. We just got to get the playmakers to make plays together. The biggest thing about us is bringing in new pieces, getting those pieces aligned with our system, and where everybody is working together as one to have an outcome. Has there been any issues with players playing into your system? Well, naturally because we have two players that are in our main rotation that are new to our system, that it's going to take some time for us to jail. But once we jail, we'll be just fine. Thank you for speaking with me today, Coach Daphne Thomas. Good luck on the rest of the season. I'm Aaron Fitzgerald reporting for Red Devil Post Game. The boys basketball team once again has a winning record, but they too have had close calls. Like in the game against Overton, the guys went head to head with the Wolverines in the fourth quarter, coming out on top 47 to 46. Post game reporter Aaron Fitzgerald also spoke with the coach and a player to get their take on the season. The GHS boys basketball team started out their season well. The boys are currently two and one. I'm here with coach Ratusha Spears and shooting guard Devin Hall. Coach, is this how you envisioned the season to start? No, man. <laughs> well, we knew it would be a, a, a roller coaster season. We lost six seniors last year, and those six seniors took away 42 points um, on a team that was ranked third in the state in match prep and seventh in the state overall. So that's a lot. So we brought in four new starters. So it's going to be a, a up and down season. Like I tell the guys, we just want to be playing our best, best basketball in February. So right now we're going to face some ups and downs. We lost to a good MUS team the other night. We beat a real scrappy uh, um, Overton team tonight. So 
it is kind of what I expected. Not what I wanted, but it is what I expected. Devin, how is it playing in Coach Spears' system? I, I really like playing in his system. I feel like it suits my game. I play my best with in his system. Coach, how has shot selection and productivity been a factor in team success? Well, it's been really been our defense. The shot selection has been horrible, just to be honest. But that's to do with we're bringing four new starters in and nine new players all together. And on top of that, today we had a tragic, not a tragic, but a real severe injury. One of our players, Matthew Bugner, he had a break of his fibula and tibia in uh, warm-ups this evening, and he's going to have to have surgery this morning. So I was at the hospital, came back, the guys fought hard, and we won. So we, we gave that to Matthew, but it wasn't the shot selection wasn't what I wanted, but that's to be expected when you bring that many new players in. Devin, what play do you think sealed the win tonight? The last play of the game really feel like they sealed the win tonight. Coach, has there been any change in the emphasis on defense or offense you feel has been to the benefit of the team? Well, defense is going to have to carry us early in the year. Offense will come uh, right now because that, that we got to get togetherness, and that will come. Right now the defense is going to have to carry us, and it did. Uh, the two plays at the end, we stole the ball at the end, defense. So defense is going to have to carry us until we get offense gel. Devin, do you feel there's been any adjustments Coach Spears made that has helped the flow of your game? Yeah, I feel like it's a lot of dressing team made, like putting the ball in my hands a little bit more. And that's really it. Coach Spears and Devin, thank you for talking with me. Thank you. Reporting for Red Devil Post Game, I'm Aaron Fitzgerald. Competitive cheer is back at GHS, and our cheer team is headed to nationals for the first time in more than a decade. Post game reporter Kaylin Brownlee and videographers Michelle Yu and Chris Pena show us how the team is preparing for the competition. It's been over 17 years and the Germantown competitive cheer team is back. The team did great being our first competition since 2010. Um, we got a bid to nationals, which is also a great thing. We get to compete in February and it's really great experience for us to all be able to go to the next challenge. First competition was great. You know, um, our goal was to hit the routine and get a bid to nationals, and they did that, and they looked awesome. We should improve on energy in the cheer. We should improve more on difficulty on our stunts, and I feel like we can improve more on our technique. This group of young ladies have been working hard to get the GHS cheer team back in the competitive game. Now that we got the bid to nationals, we have time to focus on just, you know, getting better and making everything harder. I feel like we was all in the right mindset. Our goal, you know, we want to go to Orlando and do the best as possible. We're going to wish the cheerleaders good luck and hopefully they bring back a trophy from nationals. Well, that wraps up today's Red Devil Post game. Thank you to the coaches and players who appeared on today's show. And good luck to all the teams on their seasons. We can't wait to see what the new year holds for our GHS sports. From all of us here at GHS, thank you for tuning in. I'm Christian Meyer. And I'm Caden Bolton. Go, Go Red, Red Devils, Devils and Happy Holidays! holidays.